Hey Wildcats, these notes here, um, if you missed our intro to projectile motion notes right here, um, we'll do those right now online so you can catch up here. So um, we're going to start just by what is a projectile? We are breaking into two dimensional motion here. Um, so far everything we've done has been in a line, one dimensional motion. We're going to get into 2D here. Okay, so first thing you need to um, be able to do is classify something as a projectile or not. So let's do some examples here. Um, these two things, okay, a baseball and a bullet are projectiles. Okay, not projectiles. A bird, okay, a bird that's flying, um, a plane, Superman. Not projectiles. Okay, all these things go through the air. All right. Okay, we're gonna um, let's do a couple more. Um, here's my favorite one. How about a squirrel versus a flying squirrel? Okay, what's the difference there? A squirrel kind of hopping limb to limb versus a flying squirrel. Uh, a ski jumper is a projectile. A skateboarder going off a jump. Okay, all right, so what do these things have in common um, that makes them projectiles? Well, there's two things here. Um, the first thing is they must be in free fall. Okay, all of these things are in free fall. So that means the acceleration is equal to little g or negative 9.8 if we're talking about earth um, and <coughs> they are only under the influence of gravity gravity is the only force on them so that means a few things okay um, means we have to be able to neglect air resistance Okay, so for example, a frisbee would not be a projectile because it operates on principles of air resistance. It kind of floats, if you will, on the air. Um, a boomerang turns around. It operates on air resistance. Those would not be projectiles. A piece of thrown paper, all right, is not going to be a projectile because air resistance is going to matter. Now there are, there is air resistance on these things. Okay, but we can we can mostly neglect it. We can say it's negligible. All right. Um, another thing that would make something not in free fall. Okay, so we can't have any self propulsion. Okay, no steering. Okay, we get into forces like lift. Um, steering in air often it, it involves Bernoulli's principle, okay, and wind resistance and all that. So that would make the objects not in free fall. These things over here are in free fall. Most, any kind of thrown ball, tennis ball, golf is a great example um, of project, projectile. Okay, so we got that going on. Now this we've already studied a bunch. We've studied one dimensional motion. We've studied, we've studied dropped objects. We've studied objects that are thrown up and come back down. We've studied objects where we give them an initial velocity vector, but that's all one dimensional motion, okay? So when we break into 2D, that's when we start calling these things projectiles and they have to have a horizontal velocity component. It's constant. Okay, causes them to follow a curved parabolic path. These things do have this, their constant velocity would be zero, but we don't normally call those projectiles because it's only one dimension. Okay, so we get a tennis ball and we hit it, it's gonna follow a path like this. Projectiles follow parabolic paths and their horizontal velocity is constant. 
Um, so again with that, what that means is no acceleration. Horizontally, no acceleration. Vertically, we got this, okay? So this is what's going on in the y direction. This is what's going on in the x direction, okay? And that's what makes projectiles projectiles. Um, here, acceleration is equal to g. Here, acceleration is equal to zero, okay? That means for this part, for horizontally, there's only one equation we use to describe the motion, and it's this. Vx equals change in x over time. <coughs> or if we wanted how far it goes horizontally, delta x is equal to horizontal velocity times time. All right, nothing with acceleration will be used with the horizontal. Okay, now vertically, yes, we'll have little g. Okay, also in class, um, an assignment that you need to do. Okay, let's skip down here. Your projectile art. Projectiles are cool because they show up in real life all over the place. Sports you like to do. Um, pick any projectile and just draw it. Okay, on a normal piece of paper, do a drawing. All right, put some color into it sort of a fun little art project all right i'm not going to judge your artwork um, but put some time into it so um and be prepared to present it all right now mostly just for fun throw a haiku in there about your projectile it's five syllables seven syllables five syllables just do this on a piece of paper it's kind of a fun thing we do in class you walk up front you read your haiku you show your picture and if you got a story to go with your projectile maybe you got in a snowball fight with your brother and something happened whatever <clears throat> just kind of a fun thing we do to help uh, get a bunch of examples out there be prepared for that in class that'll be coming you don't have to be nervous about it it literally takes 30 seconds for you to show your picture and read your haiku okay and then we do this right poetry reading we snap for each other um, let's see last thing I'm gonna say if we go up here the best example of a projectile is a satellite. Okay, now you know, might be like, Mr. Hicks, but it's not in free fall. It is, it is in free fall. Satellites are falling objects, even the moon. The moon is falling. The moon is not falling into Earth. Okay, one dimensional motion. The moon has got a horizontal velocity component at all times, so it is falling around the Earth. All right? Lots on this topic later in the class, okay? For now, we are just going to say it's the best example of a projectile because, check it out, there's no air resistance on those things. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully this uh, gets you caught up with what we did in class.